you don't understand how Washington works. And that's when I say, yes, I do. It doesn't. <laughs> and so I don't need to learn how it doesn't work. Washington needs an attitude adjustment. That's what's going to be my job as President of the United States. And it was former Senator Eric Dirksen who popularized the statement, when they feel the heat, they will see the light. You see, my job is to tee, up, tee it up. And the people of the United States of America who will understand 999, y'all going to be the heat to get Congress to pass it in the first 90 days. One of my guiding principles is, if the people understand it, they will support it and demand it. Our economic situation, folks, is not just an economic imperative. It's a national security imperative. Because if we don't grow this economy at a robust, robust rate like we can grow it, we're going to continue to do what's going on in Washington, D.C. now. Where do we cut defense next? How much do we cut? Even to the point that the president has a formula to cut more of our defense department when the world is not safer, if in fact this stupid super committee does not come up with what it's supposed to come up with. That, that, that's not leadership. You don't lead by a formula. And by, and by having a formula, if they don't come up with what they're supposed to come up with, that's like putting a bullseye on the backs of our men and women in uniform. I would never put a bullseye on the backs of our men and women in uniform. The world is not safer. And this is why we've got to make national security one of our biggest priorities. What I plan to do is to make enhancing our technical capabilities, enhancing our ballistic missile capabilities around the world. You've got these pipsqueak potentates in Iran and North Korea routing their sabers. And this president decided to reduce our investment in our ballistic missile defense capability. No, we need to be increasing our capability in that regard. And then very quickly, one other one. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about energy, illegal immigration, all of them. I take the same approach. What's the problem? Make sure we're working on the right problem. On immigration, we got four problems. The reason nothing has been done because we got four problems and not one. We got to work on all four. Secure the border for real. Enforce the laws that are there. Promote the path to citizenship that's already there. We don't need a new path to citizenship. And here's number four that blows liberals' minds. Empower the states to take care of the legals that are already here. Let the state decide. That's how we get our hands around that problem. And you know, I get criticized by the media. You know, when you run for president, you know, you're going to get criticized. Governor Deal knows that. I get criticized for the media. Well, you don't have extensive foreign policy experience. <laughs> and the guy in there now does? <laughs> <laughs> Is this a double standard? <laughs> <laughs> At least I have a philosophy to foreign policy, which is an extension of the Reagan policy. Peace through strength yes. was Reagan's policy. Yeah. philosophy. Peace through strength and clarity. We must clarify who our friends are, clarify who our enemies are, and stop giving money to our enemies. And the other reason we need to clarify who our friends are and so we can tell our enemies who our friends are. <laughs> Such as, I want the world to know that we will stand by and with Israel no matter what. One of the reasons
reasons you've got these pipsqueak potentates <laughs> acting up around the world is that they see America as weak with this administration. Yes. When I was in Israel last August, one of the frustrations that Deputy Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister expressed to me, I, I met with him for a while. He said one of our biggest frustrations, given all the turmoil going on in the Middle East, is that they did not know where the United States stood through this administration with Israel. And I assured him that with the Keynes administration, that would be no doubt. Because I told him that there's an old Southern expression, if you mess with Israel, you're messing with the United States of America. He said to me, I think I understand. <laughs> we have to make it clear who our friends are. And it must be clear to the rest of the world that we're gonna stand with our friends. And it's got, it must be clear we're not going to tolerate people who threaten the United States of America or those that threaten our freedom. Folks, we have a giant task ahead of us. And I hope you go to my website, hermancain.com, for more information on how I would approach all of these crises that we face. The approach is the same. I believe that we need to make sure that we work on the right problem. This is what business people do. My business career for over 40 years, this is what I did. Those of you that are in business, this is what you do. You solve problems every day. You solve problems in order to stay in business. One of the biggest problems we have right now is that problem solving is not going on in Washington, D.C. The creation of problems is what's going on in Washington, D.C. <laughs> Things are getting worse. They're not getting better. And so your challenge is to help me not only get elected, but your challenge is to also encourage people to make sure that they do what they can do. Not everybody can run for president. Not everybody can be governor. But everybody can do something. And the amount that you have done in the past is not enough. As Emeril Lagasse says, the great chef, you've got to kick it up a notch. Yeah. Everybody's got to kick it up a notch. I didn't expect to kick it all the way up to run for president. <laughs> up a notch and you've got to kick it up a notch. Three things that I ask of you. First, get rid of that liberal in that plane. Over there. <laughs> I guess he figured that he wasn't going to drown me out so he cut it off. Three things I ask you to do, folks. I can't do this alone. I can't do this by myself. The good news is things are going great. Finally, the mainstream media is catching on. Three things I want you to do. Number one, stay informed. Stay informed. Know your facts. We got a little brochure here for you to explain 999. Because the first thing they're going to say is regressive on the poor. No, it's not. That is a lie. And you got to know your facts so you can refute it. And they don't want to work the numbers. If you work the numbers, you find it's not regressive on the poor. It liberates the poor. A family of four making $50,000 a year under the current system is going to pay approximately $10,000 in taxes under the current system. Under the 999 plan, they're going to pay $4,500 in taxes on that second nine. That leaves $5,500 to pay the sales tax when they go to the grocery store. If they pay sales tax of 9% on every dime that they have left, they're still going to have $2,000 left over after they get all the way down. What's regressive on the board? You put money in that pocket. But that's that standard argument. It's regressive on the poor, And it's going to give a big tax break to the rich. Here's my message to all of the poor. Learn how to get rich. And y'all want this silly bucket rule? Okay, I hope y'all get this on here. I don't care about Warren Buffett and his rule. I want everybody to have an opportunity in America to achieve what they want to achieve. But it's just playing the class warfare card. Stay informed. Know your facts. Secondly, stay involved. Stay involved. Come to these meetings. Go to other meetings. Where's Sue Everhart? Sue Everhart is one of the hardest working chairmen of the Republican Party. Yeah. Secularstupidist.com. Conservative.com. Rightosophy.com.